tutor, um, a lifelong learning tutor and an ESOL tutor um, with Dumfries and Galloway Council. And this is the Christmas edition of my tips and tricks. I'm going to share my screen and kind of get started. So that's hopefully sharing for you all. That's, That's perfect, good. Catherine. That's looking good for me. All right, so I've ambitiously uh, named this the Tips and Tricks um, session, and um, most of us probably met uh, in the last uh, webinar where we talked about starting this conversation about um, teaching online. So here I am. Um, in brackets there, I've also got mindset because I think a lot of what I want to talk about today is really the educator's mindset. And uh, as you can see from my little emoji there, I'm uh, really starry-eyed about this whole online experience. So let's see how we go. I put a question to you all um when i last met you and the question was basically to think about your absolute best self in the physical classroom and what was the one thing or a few things that you wish you could take online as we have been transitioning online and any anything else that you wanted to know so that's kind of where we're starting at i got quite a lot of responses um i i guess i should sort of admit that I'm not 100% uh, clear on who's in the room and the type of um, teaching and learning environments that you work in. So in the chat box, just give me an idea of who you're working with, what devices you use. Is it a Mac? Is it a non-Mac? Do you use a phone? What's your operating system? Any techie stuff that could be of interest? And what's your next step? Where do you want to take your learners? What do your learners use? Any info will be great. Um, and some of the feedback that I've already gotten from you um, cover kind of two main concerns. So the technological stuff, and the pedagogical stuff, so what's happening in the classroom. Now, in terms of the technological stuff, some of the responses that I received um, included which platforms or which applications are the best? That's a really good question. Um, and of course, some troubleshooting challenges, how to share my screen, um, had some glitches and hitches and all those sorts of things. And then, of course, practitioner IT skills and learner IT skills. Um, in terms of the pedagogical stuff, uh, things like, and there is quite of interesting, the feedback um, on this issue was quite nostalgic to a certain extent. So the kind of loss of certain um, uh, lovely stuff that we had in that physical face-to-face -face classroom. So things like group dynamic difficulties, um, barriers with the relationship building, um, the loss of learner cues and signals from that kind of intimate, very close range face-to-face -face interaction, how to read the room, always challenging in an online space. Other things like collaborative learning, seeing a, a student's, um, a learner's piece of paper and the working out and also how to manage um, different learning levels. So I'll try to get to that sort of stuff today. One of the most popular questions is, which is my preferred uh, platform? And this is a really good question. It's a hard one to answer. My question is that as a self-employed um, tutor and uh, someone who's worked in the creative interest industries, I use Zoom. And that's because I guess Zoom is has been around for a lot longer than Teams and I started using it before Teams came around. Um, teams is, Microsoft Teams is only about four years old. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the differences between these two platforms because they kind of often do the same thing, but they come from different um, philosophies and, and different kind of scenarios. So in terms of the online space, and let me know again in the chat box, um, what are you using? There are four main players. There's Microsoft, of course, Zoom, Google, and Facebook. Oh, Karen's using Zoom. Oh, we've got a few Zoomies in the room. That's great. I feel comfortable with the Zoomies. 
Uh, oh, lots of Zoom. Oh, fabulous. And does that mean the Zoomers are on, are you using personal computers or work um, computers? Uh, personal, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming that most of the Zoomers are using personal computers. Okay, so let's have a look at, um, so Microsoft uh, has got Teams, which is really growing and a lot of people are using it. Uh, Zoom, of course, is around. You've got Google Meet, that is an option. And I'm asking about the kind of computers that you use and whether you've got work computers or personal computers because um, some of these options might not be available to you given the restrictions that some work computers come with. So you might not be able to access Google um, applications on your computer. And if that's the case, um, yes. Yeah. So Grace is saying that her local authority doesn't allow Zoom. Um, I'm actually between my work computer and my um, personal computer and um, I, I can't access um, Google, for example, on the work computer, etc. So there are, these are the types of options that will determine what we end up using. Facebook Rooms, anyone in the room um, in Facebook, teaching in Facebook using Rooms, that's a really fun new thing that, um, yes, uh, lovely. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a bit about um, Microsoft Teams and um, what I want to suggest in this room is that there is really no reason whatsoever for anyone here, that's 75 of you, 76 of you, um, no one in here should be feeling weird about using this technology because the four players, Microsoft, Zoom, Google and Facebook want you to have the most seamless experience because they want you to keep you. So I've got some links here and um, uh, I, I basically they're here because it just shows you how much uh, quick and easy information there is for you to learn about the applications and to become your own troubleshooter. So I'm going to really strongly suggest that you become the kind of cheerleader of the technology um, because once you start working in on these platforms you're not only going to be teaching or tutoring the content of your course um, but you're also going to have to guide midwife maybe and yes even cheerlead your learners into the online space so Will these slides be circulated? Yeah, um, actually, I won't do that now, but I am able to, actually, I might just do that right now. Give me two seconds. I'm just gonna get a share link here, and I'm actually using Google Slides, and what I'm going to try and do right now is very quickly get a link for you all. So copy the link, and then in the chat box, One second, I'm going to paste the link and there are the slides for you there. So you can open them up in the background. And um, there's one beautiful thing about working online. And I can see that some of you are already in there. Um, and I'll just go back a bit. So there's a beautiful thing of working online. I can very, very quickly and seamlessly um, offer you um, what I'm working on. And in fact, if I turned on the permissions for you, we could co-create in this um, slide experience here. Thanks, Laura. All right, so here we are. Um, there's a demo for you to look at with Teams. So you can pop over to Teams and this is a live demo that takes you through what it looks like. So basically spend a few minutes popping around and exploring Teams. What I wanna say about Teams is that Microsoft Teams is a platform for a, it's literally a digital office space. So imagine your own physical office space where you've got um, you've got desks for all the employees, you've got meeting rooms where you've got certain conversations happening in different meeting rooms, you've got the marketing room and you've got the production room and then you've got a conference room where you might bring a larger group of people in, where you might invite guests from outside of the organisation and then of course you've got the kitchen area, the water cooler where all the 
kind of gossipy conversations take place where people are mentioned, et cetera, and so on. That is Microsoft Teams. And if you belong to an organization that um, is already committed to Microsoft products, then Teams is going to be one way to connect with your team. So it's a hub for bringing teams together to collaborate in a digital space as opposed to a physical space. Um, although, of course, you would use it in a physical space as well. So um, it's a very um, sleek and professional looking uh, application. And Teams has things like a chat function, which you use instead of emailing your fellow team members. Um, it has a meeting space where you, you can do online and video conferencing. There's a file space where you can, instead of sending an email and attaching um, files to your email, you just upload them to the Teams hub, to the hub, to the dashboard, and you can um, use Teams in that way. So of course, if you're then going to be um, teaching teaching learners or inviting learners into your space, you might well use Teams and anybody can pop onto a Teams call. You don't even have to download the app, you can actually access it on a browser, which kind of makes it accessible to students. There are some downsides though. Teams is committed obviously to all the Office products, so your students, your learners would have to have access to Word, um, if you want to do any collaborative stuff within Teams with, and you also would need a OneDrive cloud drive to store all the documents. So there are some limitations, but that's basically Teams. In a nutshell, there's a quick start guide um, on these slides there for you and video help. And I just want to show you the video section. So again, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to troubleshoot um, or learn a bit about using Teams on your own. The quick start video, if you click on that, it's literally um, a one minute video. So they've got really quick one minute videos on how to do stuff so you can pop in and out and then help students as well at the same time. Um, so that's Teams and then Teams also has an education suite as well, which is which has some extra functionality for um, uh, cl the classroom experience. Now, let me just uh, move on to my next little slide. One question that I've been asked is, what's the best way to share your screen during team meetings and training? Um, there have been some hitches along the way. So um, this is a difficult question to uh, answer because, first of all, I don't know what uh, device you might be using. So one thing to think about when things are playing up on your computer. Yeah, is someone wanting to ask a question? Hmm. Um, one thing to think about uh, is to think about what computer you're on. So if it's a Mac, you might have to set up certain other permissions. If it's a um, non-Mac, uh, there are certain permissions to uh, activate in that case. Um, the subheading there, the question is try to share a video during a meeting and that wouldn't work for some reason. So does that mean that the sound wasn't working, you weren't able to hear it? What is the the issue there. Not 100% sure, but I'm going to give you some answers. And the main answer is that the best way to work out how to solve a problem is to find it yourself via Google. So everything that I try and troubleshoot, I search for it on Google. And uh, I might just do a little example there. Does anyone else just pop into Google to try and find an answer to something? So how to share screen, and as you can see, everything's popping up for you. And then you need to kind of add what computer you're using because each type of platform is going to respond to Teams or to Zoom in a different way. So how to share screen, screen on Teams on Mac. So if you can get as much information as you can to Google, it will most likely direct you to where you need to go. And the second listing there is sharing content in a meeting in Teams. And if you click on that, it takes you back to the Microsoft site and it walks you through 
what you need to do. So you need to know whether, and this could be a student's problem, whether it's a desktop or a mobile device, you know, platforms, applications respond different, differently depending on which device it's on. And um, there are various pieces of advice depending on whether you want to share your desktop or a specific window, PowerPoint, etc. This also gives you some ideas on how to create a better user experience by choosing which part of your screen you're going to share. And then, of course, a separate little section on how to share on a Mac. If anyone's on a Mac, um, you might have to give certain permissions before you're able to do the sharing. So if you're in control of downloading the applications, it will walk you through and kind of tell you what you need, what permissions you need to set up before you can get started. And one massive tip, the good old start, restart, and then start again and turn on and off still works. So if you're trying to use um, a screen share for the first time and it's not working for you and you've set your permissions, etc., just restart everything and more often than not, it, it works. And that piece of advice is really great for students who might have trouble with audio or a microphone's not working. The first bit of advice is just turn everything off and on. I know it sounds really old school, but it really works actually. Okay, here's another question. Um, oh, that one's just been answered. So again, talked about um, how to share a video. So it could be a sound thing. And what you're looking for is the bottom left-hand side there. There's a little button to turn on um, to include computer sound. Now that looks different on a Mac. I think Mac automatically turns on the sound for you, but if you're on a non-Mac, you might have to select that button. So look around um, and if you're not seeing something that you think should be there, then just do a quick Google or pop over to the um, videos and find the little one minute um, video on uh, managing meetings and that pretty much covers everything. Uh, moving on. Um, and this is again, try and find that share computer sound. This is on Zoom. And of course, the most popular question is the breakout room question. And from what I understand, Teams is still rolling out this feature. Now, Microsoft Teams has an education suite, and I think that the educators are potentially going to get the breakout rooms before the, um, the, the free users. I was on the University of Edinburgh's website just earlier this morning, and they seem to have breakout rooms activated on their suite. So um, for anyone who's been trying to find the breakout rooms, has anyone in the chat box let me know if you've been trying to find the breakout rooms feature in um, Microsoft uh, Teams? Um, it's a very popular feature in Zoom and I use that quite a lot in Zoom and it's quite intuitive and easy to set up breakout rooms within Zoom. Um, coming in January, so I heard, yeah. Yeah, that date keeps shifting, Sharon, it's quite interesting. But I, I, I do know that some, um, some uh, organizations do have it already. So it's something to look out for. Um, in the meantime, one thing that you could do if you are restricted to Teams um, and you're allowed to use Zoom, or if you're not, grab your personal computer and use Zoom. Zoom is free for 40 minute um, sessions. So you could actually send your learners um, over to Zoom for a breakout scenario if your breakout rooms are going to last for, for less than 40 minutes. Um, did I say 40 seconds earlier? Um, the other thing that I do with some creative groups is we pop on to, uh, for some people who have the free Zoom, pop on to Zoom for 40 minutes, do an activity, then log out, then log back in for another free 40-minute session. So that's one option um, to to um, use breakouts. Um, so when you finally get the breakout uh, option in Teams, there's going to be a little breakout icon that's probably going to look like that. So again, it's going to be just where all the other tools are. And if you can't see it now, that means you don't have it yet. Okay, so Zoom, again, Zoom 
is intuitive and it's easy and Zoom, just like Microsoft has um, invested a lot of time on giving you as many resources as you can in order to be able to learn Zoom and also, um, you know, increase your level of confidence. Because as I suggested earlier, if you're leading your learners into the Zoom space, you want to be 100% confident um, so that you can make their experience as comfortable and safe and and enhancing as you can so lots of stuff there about zoom i'm not sure that you have any questions about zoom it's really straightforward um and i'm going to talk a little bit about how i use breakout rooms later and ian's got uh, a workaround for ian are you suggesting the add-ons um that they've they're um they've brought out all right, I'll let Ian answer that in the background and I'll keep going. All right, the next one is Google Meet and this is where we are. Yeah. And uh, Google Meet, of course, is good in terms of accessibility because learners don't need to download an app, which you do in Zoom. But even if you have to download an app, um, for Zoom, for example, if you download Zoom, again, it's a very intuitive experience. It's really just clicking, 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 turning off, turning on, and opening up pretty much. Um, yeah. I'm just looking at Ian's comment. Yeah, the channels in um, Teams. Okay, that's definitely an option, um, but it needs a whole lot of setup before the actual um, meeting takes place. Whereas in Zoom, you can um, really spontaneously set things up within Zoom. So there are benefits um, to both. In Google Meet, um, you've also got an education suite, which um, pretty much is um, just allows you to seamlessly access all the Google um, applications so that you can use slides and you can use Google Docs, etc., which you can really do anyway um, without the, the education suite. So that's something to think about. Google Meet is a really good option. And finally, the kind of maybe, I didn't notice if anyone said they're using um, Facebook Rooms. So if you did answer me before, but um, I missed it. Let me know. Is anyone using Facebook Rooms? So Facebook Rooms um, is just, you know, that fun Facebook vibe. Um, so Facebook Rooms really is focused on you meeting up with your friends. But it's a really low-key, really intimate, fun way of um, meeting up with learners. And the good thing about Messenger Rooms is that you don't need to have a Facebook account and you don't need to use have a Messenger account either. So again, in terms of accessibility and in terms of reaching out to learners who might not have, um, you know, other technology, uh, Messenger Rooms is a good uh, way to go. I So you don't need an account and you can do um, shared screens as well there. While I'm in on the Facebook kind of uh, discussion, I might pop into and ask you again in the chat box, have you, is anyone using Facebook groups to um, meet with learners? I'm just gonna quickly show you um, a group that I lead and um, it's just um, outside of my council work. It's a philosophy group and um, basically the options that a, uh, Facebook group offer you are really actually quite good. If you can kind of um, skip through and pass through all the noise of Facebook, you actually get a really good experience here. So one thing I love is that you can use units and you can organize your content in um, social learning uh, units and there's progress bars so learners can see how far they've gone with things. You can organize things according to days or um, uh, themes there are various there are unlimited units that you can set up and you can upload files etc uh, and so on and some of the functions that you get with a social learning group is that you can have mentors you can set up people as mentors so you can have a buddy scenario happening with learners so so higher 
level learners can buddy up with um, other learners and you've got your rooms and media and announcements which is a really good way to organize things um, in your classroom so Facebook groups is actually uh, an interesting option and moving on from that some tips that uh, some of you wanted to kind of take away um, in terms of being online and being in the video um, conferencing uh, space here are some tips that um, I I always give to people and let me know if you have any in the chat box um, I was asked if I start the class earlier to make sure that um, you know everyone's online etc I'm always uh, ready uh, at least at a minimum 10 minutes earlier and always doing a microphone and video check and I've been teaching online for well over a decade but I always check my microphone and my video beforehand so that's one thing to always do uh, wear earbuds and earphones and that's for you and your learners um, a lot of learners kind of turn up with just the speakers from the laptop and what can sometime happen then is that you can get some echo I don't know if you can see my face um, but I've actually got just the little e um, phones that come with a Apple phone and they cost about 19 pounds but you can get cheaper ones so I would really invest in them and also if you've got learners um, I would recommend that they use their earphones um, and if they don't then think about maybe finding some money somewhere to purchase earphones for learners and posting them to them because sound in an online um, learning experience is really probably the most important thing you want to be able to hear people really really well um, the other thing, uh, the third bullet point there is look at the camera. Um, so I'm actually at the moment, I don't know if you can see my eyes, um, but I'm actually looking right at the camera and I'm obviously I'm going to be looking at my notes as well. But if I look at the camera, you get the effect that I'm actually looking right into your eyes. And that can really just create a much more intimate and personal experience. We tend to kind of look around the, the screen rather than into the camera. Um, think about your background design and your props. So I'm set up for Christmas at the moment, but um, you might have some of your favorite books in the background, etc. So think about what your background looks like. Um, I really want to suggest that computers and laptops are much better than telephones. And I know that a lot of students, learners are accessing um, services and um, tutors via telephones. Uh, it would be really interesting to know and let me know again in the chat box if you're keen on typing at me um, do you know what devices your learners are using are they Androids are they Mac devices are they smartphones or are they landlines what are they using and I really want to recommend again that really going forward there should be a laptop for every student so try and find some money from someone's pocket to get laptops to the students you can get a laptop for like 200 pounds um, because the learning experience is much more enhanced using laptops you want learners to be able to go between tabs pop into google docs type something use google use a dictionary online um, oh that's great Cheryl so I know that a lot of students are just using phones but that really is not going to cut it and it's not going to create um, the best experience for them or for you Android phones okay John all right I'm very clumsy using just the phone I need a big screen that could be my age showing there um, the microphone the famous microphone mute um, I think as we have um, met more and more online um, you know video conferencing etiquette has become uh, much more of a natural thing so yeah learning how to mute etc so you might of course need to do some meta talking and some meta narrative and kind of explaining how things work in this new brave new space um, in the online space um, I've got a tip about looking good online and by far I'm pretty sure, unless Ian is going to correct me on that one, um, 
I'm pretty sure Zoom offers the nicest um, filters for anyone who um, whose priority it is to have a good look online. So have a look at your appearance, Use look through the settings and see what your preferred application can do for you. And of course, share those tips with your students. Um, using reactions and emojis, I'm gonna talk about them again a bit later when I talk about the classroom space, but um, that's something to consider. And you can literally go on Google and just search for, there are a whole lot of sites that actually have emojis and you can just copy and paste them. There are also some keyboard shortcuts. So if you're using a Mac, you just Google keyboard sh shortcuts for emojis and it'll tell you that it's command control and can't remember in space, I think. And that brings up the emoji keyboard. And on a non-Mac you get, um, um, I think it's the windows key and the, and the um, full stop the period and that brings up a emoji keyboard so it'd be really great and i'll show you how to use it in the classroom just to create a more intimate kind of experience using emojis they really do help um and finally practice uh, your own smiling and intonation of your voice i remember back in the day when you used to learn how to speak on the telephone you'd practice um, smiling on the telephone even though no one could see you a smile makes your voice just sound different so yeah they're my top tips uh, okay so let's move on to the classroom uh, experience as i said earlier yeah susan's made a good point in the background um Susan, are you talking about the Teams experience or or Meet? Oh, you're using the virtual uh, backgrounds, yeah. Yes, the more you add to your experience, the the more um, the computer uh, slows down a bit, I think. All right, so let's move on to the classroom experience. Um, unless you want to take a bit of a break, but I'm thinking that unless there's something really urgent about techie stuff, um, I probably maybe keep going how you're feeling at the moment. Catherine, there's a few questions that might just be easier to pick up on now rather than wait to the end and they yeah. should be reasonably quick to answer. Um, one is, do you need to be Facebook friends with your learners to do the, the Facebook rooms? Uh, no, because they don't need to have an account, a Facebook account. So, but face and Facebook groups? Uh, you don't need to be friends. You don't need okay. to be friends. Perfect. Um, Thank you. You, is anyone concerned about privacy issues or? I think people concerned? maybe were because then there was a bit of a conversation in the chat about um, having two accounts, having a work account and a personal yeah. account. And yeah. then somebody commented that um, it's Facebook policy to not have a work account and a personal account. So yeah. I, I don't know about that. Um, what you yeah. could do is you could set up a, a page, a Facebook page as yourself as teacher. So I've got an author page and a, and a me page. So I've got Catherine Cora Millis author and then Catherine Cora Millis me with my doggy pictures. So you could set up a page and then um, see what your options are there. But um, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. But you can also limit what your um, students, learners can see from your Facebook page. So you can actually control, you can customize what you share to certain audiences and keep certain audiences out of your page, which you probably do. Like you probably are keeping your granny out of your Facebook page, but sharing it with everyone else. So yeah. Okay, thank you. And yep. there was just another one around, um, if you're using a workplace Teams, can you invite personal accounts onto it? Into the actual team space or the meeting? I'm not sure. I think somebody said there, if you need to sign out of your work account on all your apps and then you should be able to move between them. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if it's the, the team or the meeting. Right, I'm not i'm not sure i think with the meet if you're setting up a meeting you can invite guests i think um if you're in the, the teams like hub space then that's limited maybe to the organization members only but i'm, I'm pretty sure you can invite guests in as well okay um, thank you yeah i think that's everything um for now okay oh, thank you
All right. Um, everyone, I think we'll keep collating questions if you do have any, because we might need to um, question the answer and keep going. So if there is something that's still lingering, then, then do feel free to keep um, adding your questions there. Um, let's look at the classroom experience. And these are some of the questions that I got um, back. So I'll just talk to them um, and feel free to add any comments um, in the chat box. So one um, comment about the classroom experience was, you know, the loss of the opportunity to make a relationship, for example, with a new learner. Um, people finding it quite tricky to do this by phone. So this is an interesting question for me, and I'm wondering, is this is anyone just still using the telephone? And if so, is there a reason for it just being the telephone? Uh, Facebook and WhatsApp, for example, allow for a much more intimate conversation to take place. You can share messages, photographs. Um, uh, Facebook, you know, you can do video, small video chats. Uh, some learners have no technology on the phone. All right, that's, that's actually, I was curious. Thanks, Janice, because I was wondering if people are still on landlines. Okay, so are there a few of you still on landlines? Yes, mobile only. Okay. Hmm. Right, so how to create an experience, uh, kind of a learner relationship with a learner who's using a landline. Hopefully that's a minority, but one thing you could do is depend on the post. And I was thinking, you know, maybe send a pack of something to this learner. I think there's another question or concern coming up that it's easier to create this relationship when you're in the same space with a cup of tea, etc. cetera. Um, what about posting a little care pa a package to this learner who's sitting there by the landline? Maybe a magazine that you could both read and, um, uh, you know, a few tea bags and some cookies and with a, a note that kind of says, you know, before our next phone meeting, um, put the kettle on, choose your tea, cookie, and let's read from page 10 of the magazine. I don't know, have a think about how you can break that wall of the phone in that way. I'm not able to use post I don't want tutors to do this out of their own pocket. Yeah, so there are mm, there are those barriers, um, but I said, and Janice is sending out learning packs. All right, so have a think of what you can do. And I know that it's a bit of a stretch, uh, you know, doing it out of your own pocket. But even if you do it just once, um, it's probably not going to cost more than five pounds to to send that off to someone who really might need that extra, you know, attention. I don't know. I'm putting that out there. Any other um, suggestions on that note? Put them in the chat box, and um, yeah, let's collate some more ideas. I'll move on to the next point. Um, this one is really interesting. So the idea that there's a lack of IT skills uh, for a learner, which obviously there might be and that this can prove to be a huge barrier and um, adding anxi anxiety to a new learning situation. So I'd really like to interrogate this, um, this concern here. Whose anxiety are we really talking about? And I'm thinking, do we then need to be much more functionally um, expert with the technology so as to be that cheerleader that I mentioned earlier and to be that midwife and to help ease um, students into a uh, you know a, a non-anxious situation. Um, so uh, I'm thinking that the more positive and the more confident you start being with the uh, technology, um, then maybe, maybe I'm thinking, and any comments in the chat box, what are your thoughts and experience? Maybe the more confident you are, that would lead to a less anxious kind of space um, in the learning environment. Yes, uh, Cheryl, Cheryl's got a good point there. 
about many new things. So in terms of um, dealing with learners who might have anxiety about change, about um, new things, how slowly can you scaffold the move into the new space? And um, and Donna's got a good point there <laughs> in the world. Uh, and Donna's saying that all the well, I probably Donna, I disagree with you. I think enthusiasm can probably create um, uh, miracles. Um, I, I'm a real, I'm a real believer in that. I really do think that. But there are certainly certain um, barriers, uh, and I guess it's just a matter of scaffolding and going slowly, taking things one step at a time. Um, any, if anyone else has any other answers to this question, that would be really interesting. And I'll, while you're doing that, I'll pop on to the next one. Um, this is an interesting one that um, video can sometimes be a bit invasive for a first meeting and um, learners might not have the digital ability or the kit to, you know, to do this anyway, to be on um, a video call. So it's much easier if you can offer a cuppa and a, and a smile. I really like that. Um, so again, I did mention the post idea. I thought the teas and biscuits, but that's not going to work for everyone in the room because um, that's not often, you know, the way to go. Maybe start with a telephone call. Maybe start with um, a Facebook messenger, uh, just text-based uh, communication. Maybe send a couple of photos of pets or children. Um, or favorite places, holidays. So maybe stick with text and images and then build up to a video call. Um, and again, I'm thinking, is there a budget anywhere? Can you scrounge around for any sort of money to get them a phone that they might be excited about using um, and turning on the camera or a um, a Chromebook, etc. If you're working with um, learners whose um, language is not, not English as a first language, I use Google Translate to um, give any sort of instructions. Uh, so if you're looking at easing someone into a new space, then um, I just use Google Translate, um, share my screen with a student if I'm on a screen share scenario or on the phone, um, or even just use uh, Google Translate. And it's not 100% perfect, but it's pretty good. And then you can actually just grab the Hungarian, for example, copy it and paste it into a message. So I've actually sustained a conversation with um, a learner um, from Pakistan, a learner from Hungary, a learner from Poland, using Google Translate and using uh, WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger and just literally just using Google Translate and copy pasting the, the, the um, native language there. So hmm, I don't know if any of this is helping or resonating with anyone, but uh, I'll pop into the next uh, Question concern, which was about group dynamic and, um, you know, the loss of or the difficult the barriers to to um, this social crack, which kind of lifts, lifts the group uh, when you're unable to meet as a group. What happens to that? How do you recreate that? So, again, t this question, again, let me know in the chat box. What are you thinking? What? How would you respond to this question? What is the group? What was the social crack? <laughs> um, in my Zoom uh, room, I start, and I, I do actually spend more time with chit-chat than you probably would in a typical classroom scenario. So I start my group with a round the Zoom Zoom room update. So we just go around the room and you know, what have you done this week? What were the what's the good, the bad, the ugly, highlights, lowlights, you know, what was boring in your week? Um, so we do and we spend a, quite a bit of time doing that sort of thing. Um, oh thanks for <laughs> Thanks, Tom and Agnes, for your support and encouragement there. Lovely. Um, so I'm thinking, yeah, maybe you need to spend more time just talking. And then, again, if you're building on that, like with my ESOL learners, I will um, do that um, talking and then pop onto um, Google Docs 
and someone had asked about going with the flow and sort of tapping into things and sort of start teaching like on the fly um so what i do then if say i had some students come back from a holiday recently and i'll just get rid of this and get to a blank hmm. <clears throat> just give me two seconds to get rid of that okay so that delay just kind of showed you that when you're sharing screen and you're doing stuff it takes a little bit longer so what i tend to do is keep um an untitled document in google docs ready at all times but uh clearly do as i say not as i do um so say we're having a just social kind of chat in the beginning and i'm with my esol learners um and then you can start typing and start putting language down on the page for them. Um, so asking question and then helping them form an answer. And then um, they can see you typing and then they can speak at you. And then at the bottom of this, you can give them a writing activity to do. So you can kind of um, do some social chat and then also start scaffolding um, and building an activity, a writing activity, a learning activity, a reading activity, etc. Um, what other comments did I have about this one? So again, um, I thought of reading the newspaper together could be a good way to um, reach out, build a bit of a bridge to someone who might be quite isolated. You know, the Wigtonshire Press free press all right let's see what else is coming up thanks for your comments everyone really interesting stuff um okay what else have i got here so the ability to read the room this is interesting it's difficult over a video call um does this impact on how the group works um if you miss this over a video call it could effectively end the group before it has started uh, i can see that we're kind of running out of time but this is a really interesting one and let me just say that i'll give you an anecdote of something that happened with my students i was in a, a class with had two students who had started with me pre-lockdown in newton stewart library and they were both you know beginner beginners and they were working excellently well together and they both worked at the same workplace so they would um one would drive from the workplace and the other would hitch a ride and they'd arrive at the library and they'd be fine they were great and then we moved on to zoom and it was great really good working together and then at one point i noticed that the stronger of the two she was suddenly struggling she couldn't find words couldn't speak was really struggling so clearly there was something going on beyond the language barriers in the end i found out that they'd had a really serious falling out and they weren't speaking to each other and then one of them stopped coming to the zoom class saying that they couldn't actually get home to access the wi-fi and there was no wi-fi that could access at work anyway the council was really great and we got this learner a Wi-Fi dongle and so she is now able to find a safe little quiet space in her office and she logged on to Zoom via the Wi-Fi there and she was actually really responding well again so um, yeah you might need a bit of creativity here um, in, in terms of reading the room I was able to notice that quite strongly and then connect with her via facebook messenger so i had her not as a friend actually no we are we are friends on facebook and so we were able to have an intimate chat on facebook messenger now, that's a hard one um any other uh tips in the chat box might be interesting as well for all of us okay other things i'm going to try and go a bit quickly and please please stop me when it's really urgently time to stop one thing that was really interesting about um this question here is the clues and signals that you pick up from someone's eye so that face-to-face -face contact um so again emojis um you've all got the slides here there's a link here to 10 really useful ways of using emojis in the 
classroom, anything from giving you feedback about how things are going. I would love the idea of creating a class code um, so you can sort of do a cut out, a little image, and have all the emojis and then students can learn which emoji to use depending on their specific feedback. You can create a sliding scale. Um, so lots of interesting things to do with emojis. Uh, this image on the right hand side is from Zoom and Zoom has a thing called reactions and they're really fun to use. You can have a heart reaction, a, um, a laughter reaction, an applause reaction. And it looks really primitive, but, but it actually really transforms the space when people use that. And uh, one other thing I was thinking of is if you go online, you just search for emojis, you can create a little class code. So teach students how to use the um, smirking face, the neutral face. And if you ask them, how do you feel about this activity? If you get a neutral face, then you might have to rethink your, your, um, your classroom strategy, et cetera, and so on. So that's something to think about. Pensive face, confused face. Um, there's actually been research done that um, in, in academic um, scenarios that the use of emojis actually really helps uh, with um, f giving feedback to students and receiving feedback. So that's definitely something to consider. This one here is talking about um, using physical bits of paper. You know, back in the day when you can sit by your student and look at the bit of paper and see what they're writing and see what they're working out. Well, um, I've got a couple of hints, uh, tips rather, on that, and that is basically using Google Docs. Um, if you can't access Google, then um, I've got a link there to Etherpad, which is literally a collaborative tool where you can work with a student and you can both share. Um, I recently completed a um, some learning activities with some students and we were both in the document together and they were starting to write and I was helping them choose the right words and so it was this really collaborative thing that you can do. So that's one way of working on the same bit of paper is to use these online collaboration tools. Another great, great tool is to use um, Miro, Miro, um, and you can potentially build vocabulary together using mind maps, uh, sticky notes, and this is free for a limited um, number of boards. So I'm just using, you know, building Christmas vocabulary here, and it's literally as if you're in the classroom at the board, and you, sh you literally share this with your students, and they can choose a sticky note, place it on the board, and add a word to it. You can add emojis, you can add all sorts of things there. You can type and yep. Is that someone wanting to use the microphone? No? I don't think so, Catherine, but I'll just okay. jump in at that opportunity. Just, I'm yeah. so sorry, but we'll have to wrap up in the next Yeah, hour. absolutely. <laughs> um, everyone's got the slides, so we don't have time for the Q&A, but um, I hope that was really useful, everyone. And do uh, send any feedback that you have to Susan and uh, Laura. And in the last couple of minutes, uh, let me know in the chat box how that went for you. And uh, if that increased your level of, I don't know, confidence, gave you any ideas. Thanks, Gerard. Thanks, Amanda, Agnes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine. I think you'll you'll see from the chat there that there's a there's a lot of feedback coming in. Um, Laura, I think we can stop the recording at any time now. And um, we've just got a couple of minutes to wrap up. So, as Catherine said, she'd welcome any feedback in the chat. Um, I will put my email, um, and Laura will put hers in.